Hey, up there, legal warriors. Did you ever wonder, can one criminal defense attorney represent more than one defendant in the same criminal case? The answer might surprise you. If you're interested in this area of the law, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Freiber. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm's been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years, and I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people get the help they need. Now, I'm just going to jump right into it. What we're talking about here is something called dual representation. And dual representation sounds like two people, but it could be three, it could be four, it could be any number of defendants. And this happens quite a bit in my office where I'll get a phone call from two people that got accused of a crime at the same time, or three people, or even four people. More than once, my law firm has represented four people charged at the same time with the same crime. Although that's the exception and not the rule. Because an attorney owes an absolute duty to each of their clients. Which means if you're representing client A, then I have to do everything. If I'm representing client A, I have to do everything I can to support client A. If I'm representing client B, I have to do everything I can to support client B, and I can't take actions that, that harm client B. I can't take actions that harm client A. So if client B's defense would be improved by throwing client A under the bus, then I can't represent both people because... I can't throw client A under the bus if I represent client A. If I represent client B, I need to be able to throw client A under the bus as part of the defense. And so it's, it's uh, an absolute duty. So what we have to do is we have to analyze the situation with each potential client to determine whether or not dual representation is allowed. And if the attorney believes that dual representation is allowed, that there is not a conflict of interest, that each party is equally culpable, that, that throwing one person under the bus is not going to help the other person in any type of substantial way, then the attorney has to explain to each of the potential clients, client A and client B, about what the conflicts are or are not. And if, if a conflict develops, if the attorney represents both people, then the attorney cannot favor one client over the other then the attorney has to withdraw from both cases, which means both client A and client B end up with no attorney. So that's called uh, consent after consultation. And if you're in a situation where your attorney or you want one attorney to do more than one uh, representation in the same case, you have to make sure that that attorney has that conversation with you. And then we'll, you also need to sign a waiver saying that you understand that that it could create a conflict, that you don't believe there's a conflict, and if one develops, you understand that the attorney has to withdraw from all representations. So let's give you some examples. I can think of a few examples. Let's imagine that there are four people out in the woods taking target practice, right? They've got their, their target shooting gun. Um, they've got some can set up out uh, on a, a post. And all four people are having a good time and they're shooting the guns, they're taking turns shooting the guns, and they're, you know, they're they're being successful or they're not. And let's say they finish for the day, and an hour later, along comes a police officer. And the police officer didn't see any anybody shooting, but you're this group of four people are the only people in the area. And it turns out that there was a cabin nearby and a bullet struck a window in the cabin and this officer is really mad because there are people in the cabin and the officer is now investigating at the very least a crime called reckless endangerment. Reckless endangerment means uh, somebody taking some actions that created a very serious risk of harm to somebody and that's not the exact definition but let's just call it that and in some cases one attorney would be able to represent all four people. Now, if all four people were shooting about an equal amount and no one in, in the world knows which bullet ricocheted, right, because no one heard it, 
Well, each party, therefore, is in an equal position. There's really no conflict of interest. Everyone's as innocent or guilty as everyone else. No one even knows. So pretty clearly, one attorney could represent all four people in that case. Now, what if we just change the fact pattern just a little bit? What if only three people were shooting and one person didn't take any shots? The officer shows up, all four people are there, and the, the officer cites all four people because he doesn't know who to cite. Now, all four people go to the attorney uh, and say, can you all four, can you represent all four of us? Because we want to save some money, right? That's the main reason people do this. It's going to be cheaper, uh, typically speaking, to have one attorney represent multiple people. Well, in that case, the answer is no. Um, that attorney cannot represent all four people. They might be able to represent the three that were shooting, but they couldn't represent all four because, let's say, uh, person D is the one who didn't shoot. Person D has to be able to have a defense that says, I didn't shoot, they shot, right? And um, if one person's representing A, B, C, and D, they that person who's representing all of them can't, claim D's innocence by claiming A, B, and C shot because that's something bad against A, B, and C who we also owe a duty to. So you could see it can get pretty complicated and it's somewhat dangerous for both the attorney and for the client. Why is that? What's the downside for the client? The downside for the client is you might have an attorney who accepts dual representation and then doesn't zealously advocate for each of their clients. Or they're just not that careful or they're just not that creative. And it limits what an attorney can do. So the attorney needs to be really sure that there's no reason why this would be a conflict, right? And not only is your defense potentially limited if the attorney makes a mistake in accepting the dual representation, it also risks if the attorney realizes later there is a conflict. Now nobody has an attorney. You just wasted all that money, right? That attorney's got to withdraw from everybody. And what's the danger for the attorney? You might guess the danger is just making a mistake. You know, us attorneys, we want to get the best results for our clients. That's what we're in the business of, protecting people from the government, getting people their lives back, at least the good defense attorneys are. And um, we, the risk for us is just that we're crushed emotionally and otherwise if we sort of make a, a first call that we don't see the conflict coming because now we don't get to help anybody. And we've invested our time and our energy and our emotions and, and uh, in trying to help. And so um, we're very careful about cases that will accept dual representation. Uh, usually hunting and fishing cases are more likely because there's not a criminal intent uh, required in most hunting and fishing cases. Theft cases are pretty easy to represent multiple people because we're usually pretty equally uh, involved. And also there's a, you know accomplice liability and things like that. But some cases, like let's say you can't tell who the DUI driver was, you know, there's two people and each one claims they were driving in an accident scene, there'd be no way an attorney could represent two people there because each one needs to point the finger at the other. So dual representation is possible. The advantage for the client, typically it's cheaper. You know, it's not probably not going to be 2x if it's, let's say it's $5,000 to represent one, it's probably not 10000 to represent two. Each attorney or each law firm will say how they want to do it. So it's usually cheaper. And sometimes it can be an, an advantage because if you each have a really, the same really good attorney, you don't take the risk of one of you hiring a really bad attorney who screws things up, right? I've got a video on that as well um, about the problems of dual, if when we have a bunch of different attorneys involved in the same case with different defendants. Typically speaking, whoever takes the worst deal first, um, the prosecutor feels like they want to hold that uh that offer and make everyone else take that bad result and also be good. Whoever gets the best result first, perhaps everyone gets that result, but there's risks all around. So make sure you look for that video. If you're in a situation where you think that there is a conflict and you're going to have to have multiple attorneys, then I want you to pay attention um, to those type of risks. And I'm going to link it in the description below. So I hope you found this useful. It is a complicated subject and most people don't understand it but it can be cost effective if you have the right case. So if you found it useful, please like and please subscribe. More people get the help they need. More importantly, if you've got a criminal matter in Washington State, you can give my office a call. We've been doing this more than 20 years. We get on board, we'll identify what happened, we'll find a way forward, and we'll be there for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.